This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven, and today we're giving the pick and place vision. A huge part of pretty much every pick and place build is having cameras integrated in so the machine can see the parts. You can get pretty darn close dead reckoning, just kind of knowing where the component is and knowing about where it should go, but the way to get really accurate placement, especially with a machine that doesn't have a lot of precision parts in it, is to use a camera to align everything. A lot of pick and place builds have two cameras, one that's mounted on the head that looks downwards and one that's mounted somewhere on the body that looks up. The one that looks down can look at parts in a feeder and figure out exactly where they are so it's easier to actually pick them up successfully. And it'll also look on the board for these little dots called fiducials. And this kind of tells the pick and place where the board is and if it's skewed or rotated or oriented kind of weirdly, it'll find these two points and kind of rearrange everything to kind of know where all the parts are supposed to go. And then there's the upwards camera, which looks at parts that have already been picked. So if the nozzle goes and picks up a part, it'll hold it over this camera, and the camera will look to see if the part is kind of offset a little bit from the center of the nozzle, and also what its rotation is. And that makes it so that the machine knows exactly where the part is in space, and it can place it with like super high accuracy. So I gotta get some cameras on this thing. In the new X carriage design that I made, I put a little slot for one of these cameras. These are awesome little USB webcams. They're really, really thin. It's pretty much just the sensor and a lens mounted on a PCB. And then a four terminal connector, you just plug in on the back and it goes right to a USB port. So this is what I'm gonna be using for the webcams on the machine. And that's great and all, but what they don't have is lighting. You need to make sure that the lighting is really consistent when you're lighting both the board and your parts for the up and down cameras. Because if it changes a lot, throughout the course of a job, the computer vision part of OpenPMP kind of starts to not really know what's going on. You set it up to recognize certain outlines and stuff with a set lighting. So if that changes a lot, eh, it kind of doesn't know what to do with it. So what I'm gonna do is design a little ring light board that's gonna go around the outside of this lens on these cameras, and it'll provide nice, even, consistent lighting for all the images that are gonna be captured by these webcams. Let's hop over to KiCad. board works. This is a super simple PCB. It pretty much just connects power and ground across all of the LEDs and then sends the signal from one LED to the next. And then I just have an Arduino here that's giving the board power and spitting out the NeoPixel data line. Yo. And because they're NeoPixels, they're individually addressable, so I can make them change any color that I want, any brightness. Makes it really easy to control very dynamically whatever this thing puts out. Cool, so now that we got light coming out of this thing, we need to figure out a way to mount it to the base for the upwards camera and the head for the downwards camera. The downwards camera already has a mount for the camera, so I just need to find a way to adapt this onto that. For the upwards camera, I'm gonna make a whole assembly that holds the camera in place and also holds this around the outside of the lens so it illuminates whatever it's looking at that. So I'm gonna get jam and infusion, we'll print out some parts and throw it onto the index. <laughs> Check it out. I got a nice neat little module that has both the camera in here along with the LED ring. My favorite part about this is this top layer right here is a one layer thick 3D print and it acts as a diffusion layer for the LED ring. So, so it diffuses through the print. It's just built into the frame. Nice even lighting. Well, not perfectly even. There's still a little hot spots, but it's pretty darn good. And then of course the camera module is centered right inside the ring. You can see all its guts and goodies in the back. And here we go. 
Oh, that's so awesome. Sick, so with this working, I can now install this in the kind of front base panel on the index, the same thing that I mounted the motherboard to. So I'm gonna have it mounted straight up so the nozzle can pick up a part, hold it over the top, and take a look at the orientation with all this nice, even lighting illuminating the part on the nozzle. I love this little module thing. These little camera modules are awesome, but they do have one kind of annoying thing. At the factory, they put a little bit of this epoxy on the lens. And that's so that the focus is fixed. It can only really focus at a set distance. If you are brave, you can take an X-Acto knife and cut a little slot in that epoxy just to kind of break it free. And then you can twist the lens and adjust the, the focus distance. I've done that with this one and it allows me to focus the correct height up to the tip of the nozzle. Let's go drill some big old honking holes. <laughs> So I mounted the whole thing onto this panel right here. And then in OpenBNP, I configured the light ring to be an actuator. So when I turn the actuator on, it will send a really specific nugget of G-code that just tells Marlin, hey, make these LEDs go on. <laughs> Plus the webcam is integrated into it. And I actually have a webcam feed with the lighting illuminating it up in OpenBNV. This webcam feed is uncalibrated, so there's a fair amount of fisheye in the lens. If you were to look at a grid with this camera, which I might be able to get, I believe in you book. Yeah. So if you look at this grid through the camera, you can see the edges kind of flare out a lot. It's not very accurate. It's not very linear. OpenPMP has a whole procedure you can go through to calibrate them out. But in the meantime, I'm gonna get the other webcam mounted to the head along with another LED ring so we can get vision from both sides. We have got vision. In both directions, we have an upward facing camera and downward facing camera with integrated ring lighting. So what this means is now, not only do we have incredibly good precision using machine vision to actually pick up parts and align where the board is, but we also can look from the part after it's been picked and see exactly what orientation and placement it is, and everything's gonna be super precise, hopefully. And the best part about all of this is it's totally accessible and usable by OpenPNP. It can look at the webcam streams coming in and use all the computer vision on that. And it has control over the LED rings. It's all set, it can control the whole shebang. A few of you mentioned in the Discord server that I would probably run into some problems with my LED ring and that I would probably get some hot spots reflected off of the part and that it's actually much better to have the LEDs at an angle so that when it reflects off, it doesn't go directly back into the camera. When I was using one of these little calibration PCBs, I actually noticed that there were some hot spots from each individual LED coming through the diffuser. I don't think adding more diffusion is really gonna help here. I think 
the suggestion of having the LEDs be mounted at an actually different angle relative to the board is probably the right way to go, which is a bit of a bummer because I just built the whole darn thing up based on this ring light, but it's all good. Down the road, I'll probably end up making some flat panels that are kind of at an angle, and hopefully then I won't get any like hot spots or dark spots and it'll be a nice even lighting. But really the tricky stuff is done. I have all the lighting control built into Marlin. I have all the cameras set up going through the motherboard and going back to OpenPNP. It's got two eyes now. The next episode is gonna be redoing a lot of the mechanics of the machine. It definitely works in its current state. It's pretty darn accurate, but there's a lot of things that I'd like to improve. Currently the umbilical cord handling is very messy. Cable management is still kind of all over the place despite the fact I condensed a lot of stuff into the motherboard. Actually routing the wires around the machine has really been cleaned up yet. Also, a few of you put in some awesome PRs in the GitHub repo, updating some of the CAD, like standardizing some of the bolts and making some like little mounting points to bolt the whole thing down to a table so it's more solid, along with a whole bunch of other general improvements. All right, that's it for this one. I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help support me and projects like this, there's a link in the description where you can become a patron. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. And lastly, I want to thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay made the ring light boards for this project, and they came out absolutely beautiful. When I submitted the design for this, I had an engineer from PCBWay email me within like a few hours saying, hey, I think you forgot this file. We're not sure what to do with this. Just double checking, looking through my file to make sure it all made sense. And sure enough, I totally forgot to add, I think it was the back silkscreen file. So I re-uploaded them and off they went. They started fabricating it immediately. They came incredibly fast. I always get the matte black finish and PCBWay does that really nice. It's very consistent. If you're looking to get some boards fabricated, I highly suggest PCBWay. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Oh, that's warm. <laughs> Top of it, and take a peek at it. Oh, whoa, take a peek. Computers are so cool.